obviously last night, uh, as we kind of all heard, um, it was reported by the Wall Street Journal that Vincent Van might be coming back. Um, that was immediately followed by a press release from Vincent Van himself, uh, not the WWE, Vincent Van himself, uh, saying that he uh, that that he was intended to come back. The way it was worded was as is worded in this uh, investor press release from WWE. Now, an exploration of strategic alternatives, which is corporate speak for. Let's make a fucking sale. Um, it's turned out, as we found out in the last 24 hours, that that was not news um, to people backstage at WWE. Uh, there was some back and forth uh, emails uh, over the Christmas period. So a fantastic Christmas period in the uh, in the McMahon family household as, as mm-hmm. uh, the, 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 the Game of Thrones slash Succession drama played out. Uh, Vince initially um, suggesting that he should come back um, to help oversee essentially, in as many words, a sale, or at least oversee the uh, the TV rights deals coming up. He was basically told to go get fucked um, by Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and the rest um, of the board unanimously signed a letter saying they thought it was a terrible idea that Vince McMahon um, should come back. He mm-hmm. then came back again with another letter, um, which is kind of what we knew uh, at this stage last night, um, that, that he was going to be wanting to bring come back and reinstate Michelle Wilson and George Barrios, which if you know those names um they they were ousted not that long ago um as Vince McMahon uh, became a, a Nick Khan convert um obviously George Virus and Michelle Wilson with the uh with the, the network were. basically weren't they yeah well that was their whole idea George Barris was the was Mr Granularity he was the one who pushed the whole network model and idea mm. uh, the straight the straight to consumer stuff the 999 all of that stuff went out on their asses and now they're back um, purely as ammo for Vince McMahon to get more seats on the board that he wants. And yeah, as we've uh, seen today, and it's on the corporate WWE website, just for confirmation um, that Vince McMahon has returned, placed himself back on the board uh, with Michelle Wilson and George Barrios joining him. Um, to do so, he basically binned off these three no marks, Joel and Lance Dillon, Jeffrey R. Speed, and whoever Alan um, Wexler is. They're not the only people um, on the outgoing as well, which we'll uh, we'll get into in a minute. Mm. Um, but yeah, the uh, the Game of Thrones, the succession um, act as uh, as well and truly happened. And yeah, as of uh, as of press time, um, there's more names uh, disappearing from the WWE board. You would probably expect Nick Khan um, to be maybe among them. I mean, if his mm-hmm. job is to, you know, he's literally brought in to sort out, you know, WWE's rights and, to, yeah. you know, to, he, he's missed their negotiations and they don't, you know, he, that isn't going to be his position at this point. I wonder whether reputationally he's going to want to stick around with uh, with Vince coming back. But yeah, it is uh, it is official as of today. Um, Vince is back. Like you say, there's going to be a, a, meet, a team meeting at our face um, tonight. Um, in British time, so I guess we'll see what comes of that. But fuck me, what a what a twenty four hours in the world of wrestling, JP. It's kind of incredible. It's going to be thought of as this bizarre six month holiday that he took off, and then decided he could come back in as if nothing is. You know, he's not done anything wrong. Whole heap of things going here. I mean, it's it by a lot of counts. Uh, you know, looking at the stock price now, it's up twenty point seven eight percent today. So, like, you know, it's slightly down from the peak of about 87 earlier on. but Which it's isn't confidence of Vince McMahon. It needs that is it. That is purely That's just because they're seeing a sale coming. Yeah, mm. they can see a sale coming. This is the year of the rights negotiation. And mm. he's decided to use his majority voting power to effectively scupper any deals, which is what Nick Khan is there for, is to do that 2023 rights negotiation. And he wants to be in control of it. With the idea of, I think, possibly looking to sell to Endeavor, but does that mean Vince is going to be removed from the company or anything else? No, I mean, I think he feels, if I'm going to be completely speculating here, that he's done his time. Mm. He's done, he's had six months off. No, that's all right. I'm coming back and I'm taking over. And he mm. sees what's going on with it and he doesn't like it mm. because it's not what he wants. So mm. this is what he's doing in order to take control. And it's, the kind of sociopathy that you would expect of Vince McMahon mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. At, at this stage in the game. Um, and it's all built on the backs of, and I think this is where it's going to get very, very nasty. I can't help but feel that we're going to, like, there's going to be 
a regularity of like Wall Street Journal um, sources about this. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. the problem is, is this stock isn't going to stay up if they've got this, to this toxic person seen in charge of the company is mm -hmm. not going to be good for sponsors. Mm -hmm. And the part of the problem is, is that if if he is there, like, I mean, this sale has to be think thought of as going to be happening quite imminently. It's going to have mm. to be something along those lines. And knowing Vince, is this going to be a ploy for them, for him to basically decide that, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like a manoeuvre to get into get into power and then not sell with mm. a board completely under his thumb? I mean, mm. there is always the possibility. He just believes he can ride it out. And mm. the only examples you kind of give of people who have done this is like, say, a Trump figure. But mm. Trump's star is very much on the decline. If yeah. anyone's going to be realistic about it, like mm. it only lasts for a period of time other than like it, after a while, people are going to be just kind of disgusted if he just walks back in saying he can never retire, playing effectively a Mr. McMahon character. But, you know, so there's there's all of the things regarding that and, and where the, the control is going to be there of the board of directors. Triple H and Stephanie are on that, aren't they? So mm -hmm. were they unanimously against him coming back as well? I mean, well, apparently they all were. They I all mean, were. that's the thing. Stephanie that's McMahon's mean trying to. Something. Well, they're trying at this point to like you know they put out the the latest press release you know from the company itself and they're mm -hmm. they're trying to present like a united front and they're trying to say like you know this is a this is I think Stephanie's quote was you know we're going to take advantage of the opportunity that's in front of us but they're putting on a brave face because like the emails that you know the Brandon Thurston um, put on is uh, if, you, if you haven't seen these the great mm -hmm. Twitter so I kind of summing up this entire saga tells a different story it's very clear they didn't want him back it's very clear that vince mcmahon has bullied his way back we probably should have all expected this at oh, yeah. some point and you know as the chat's talking about now he's installed his patsies which is um which is george and michelle and he makes the point you know what's the what's the play behind bringing them back considering you know as it is true vince mcmahon does have a majority voting shares and he doesn't necessarily need them um to get stuff through but it certainly uh, pays to have some. Uh, I suppose it's always good to have some allies in the uh, in the ballroom in mm. general. And the other thing about that ballroom, as Mike Lee rightly says, is these other two names that aren't names wrestling yeah. wrestling fans are going to know: Ignis Lahoud and Manjit Singh, who re re resigned from the broad tonight. Like that's notable. Um, Manjit Singh is the person who is the lead investigator on the Vince McMahon case. You know, Vince is very much leading on the fact that nothing came of that. But that is someone who you know knows where the bodies are buried. I found it interesting in the in the back and forth, you know, letters written between Vince and the and the rest of the board that they they did note they noticed there was something in there where they said something along the lines of you know there is more information the board has become have become made aware of that isn't yet public. I wonder what that is. Is that another um, Wall Street Journal you know story waiting to happen? Like hmm. reading the reading between the lines in this back and forth just. The most fascinating thing, because you know, Vince McMahon's not even making veiled threats about you know he wouldn't back any kind of new TV deal, he wouldn't back any kind of sale unless he's directly involved. He has said in everything he's put out publicly so far that you know he thinks that you know Triple H, Nick Khan, and Stephanie McMahon, in so many words, are doing a doing a, a bang up job, and he's not gonna gonna mess with that. But I don't know. I mean, I think Will's very he strong thinks. on this being. Yeah, wolf in sheep's clothing. Like he is using <laughs> this idea that he might he's coming in to help facilitate a sale just to get himself back in. Whether a sale is actually something he really wants might be by the by. It it, it may well just be a power play. He's probably been, you know, he's not a golfer, he's not, you know, the a socialite. He's probably just been fucking bored since July and he wants back in. And like if he you know, all these you know WWE the fans are kind of you know crying into their crying into their chips with the uh, the idea that you know Papa Rich is no longer going to be in in charge of creative with the uh, the bang mm -hmm. up job he's done, which in truth has just been not being Vince McMahon, which yeah. is improvement in itself. But like I, you know, it, Vince is saying he's not coming for them, or he's saying that those guys are doing good jobs. But you know, even if they're in their jobs, even if Triple H still has his fancy job title. Is it beyond Vince to just step in and take over and stop Buck and Rowan's back again? I just don't, he can't help himself. I really don't. I, I really don't. This is what he lives for. Yes, this I'm is the only sure. thing that he's mm. ever been like success, and he's been a massive success in it. And he mm. lives for it. 
And I think mm. he'll be damned if somebody else is in charge of it other than him. He feels like he built it. This is this is his company and he gets to do what he wants with it. And mm. and that he doesn't also, I, I mean, ultimately feel that there's any penance he has to pay or he's yeah. he's already paid it. And I don't think he'll like, you know, let's not forget the start of 2022. Like we had no Stephanie McMahon and Triple H was very, very absent at that point mm. in time. And then mm. obviously like the news breaks in June, like uh, uh, June, July of, of everything else that goes on and they're in the, those positions. It, it's not a feasible working situation. Mm. Like, and he may try and do it as some sort of stalking horse thing, mm. or stalking horse in the front, like just sort of like Trojan horse goes in there mm. and just, you know, all very like they go along with it. Oh, it's Vince coming back, but no, he's gonna he's gonna have a say in who's being pushed. He's gonna look at this Sami Zayn bloodline thing and just go, no, mm. not having it. That dies <laughs> of death. Mm. You squash him in five minutes, mm. like that type of stuff. And it's and I have to you know think at this point as well. How many of those? It's the wrestlers. It's the other. Mm. It's the other components to this story as well. So many of them waiting to kind of, you know, making their um, intentions kind of clear that, that you know, they were wanting to go back to this version of WWE where they believed that they would be pushed, you know, like an FTR. Mm. And suddenly Vince is back in there. No, mm. like they know that he runs the place. It is like getting rid of him. It felt like it was too easy mm. before. He still, Ooh. and we said at the time, you know, he held the voting control. What, what would that actually mean? Mm. And we realised that actually today, what that means is, is that when he felt like he was all right to return, he's going to return. Yeah, and that's the that's the thing. He's kind, of, you know, the whole the word and beyond when he left. I'm retiring. You know, you know, at the grand old age, I, it's time for me to go. And it was like. Come on, we all know it's a. He's basically a myth as such, but it's a mm-hmm. cover, you know. We're coming back here, you know. He wants, in his words, he wanted to get out the way to to let the investigation take place, which it kind of half has. But you know, like you've alluded to before. There's so many facets to this. He's still under government investigation. He's yeah. there's still the possibility of more stories coming out. Anything could happen here. He's Teflon in the sense of, as you rightly say, you know, twenty. You know, odd, you know, as far as like the the stock price goes, you know, we're we're, we're going up and up and up right now. You know, by by point on point on point, you know, twenty odd percent a day. It's ridiculous. Um, mm-hmm. you know what's happened there, but all it's going to take is if it to come out that actually, you know, these TV deals that they're going after, well, they're going to be compromised by Vince being around. Like Stephanie McMahon had pretty much outright said so when he left that that was the main reason he had to go because. Yeah. You know, TV partners and advertisers were were getting a bit touchy about these allegations being out there, and yeah, I just think if if you if it's if it's real, and I'm not, I'm still not sure if it is real. This idea of you know him being there purely for the sale, purely to help the TV rights, then yeah, while he's been clearly, you know, and this news has been clearly a net positive for the stock price. It's a house of cards that's gonna come crashing yeah. down. But you know, they're gonna they're gonna that's the thing. I'm I'm pretty, you know, the, my two predictions coming out of the story are one, Nick Khan goes, like I just mm. don't see him sticking around. And two, you know, we made jokes at the top about Regal and people like that, and you just mentioned it yourself, like all the you know, the people who, who might be worried for the jobs now. It's very, very likely if they if a if a company is really gearing for sale. What, what do they do? They strip assets. They try to, well, not strip assets, but they try to slim down. They reduce costs. They make cuts, you know, which is what we saw from Vince McMahon when he got rid of Braun mm-hmm. and Bray and that big list of talent. Regardless of even the personal side of it, of, you know, Vince coming back to TV, and be like, God damn, pal, who's, who's this Johnny Gargano guy? It's a fact. If they're going to be making, if they're going to be making a sale, they're going to be making yeah. cuts. And we're about to go through. Probably another one of those Black Wednesdays, another one of those Black Fridays. Like it's, you know, if anyone in that company is uh, kid themselves that everything's going to be uh, plain sailing going forwards, the talents are the expendable ones. That's where they're going to make those savings. And yeah, talent should be looking over the shoulder. Carl Anderson should be asking that plane back from Tokyo to turn around. Mate. He should be, uh, yeah, should be fucking throwing his phone in the sea as far as you. Him. <laughs> 